Thank you, Dr. <coughs> Naya. I deem it a great privilege to be amongst <coughs> all of you <coughs> and uh, to participate in the symposium which has been organized today. I've been told that the symposium of this kind is <coughs> regularly organized every year. And uh, as uh, Dr. Nair had pointed out, <coughs> it is in the fitness of things that we meet frequently, scientists, experts on the subject, and also <coughs> persons who are in the cutting edge, people who will translate what is science into the practical field. Because probiotics and uh, how it affects our health and how it can prevent lifestyle diseases as we see, he is probably going to occupy a, a lot of our time, a lot of our effort, and a lot of <coughs> resources in the coming year. Non-communicable diseases, as a group, has been recognized by the government to be our next challenge in the coming years. And uh, non-communicable diseases <coughs> for uh, in a country like ours is of very great, great consequence because it is directly linked to our way of life. <coughs> the world, to use an oft cliched term, <coughs> have become a global village. People in <coughs> India, more specifically, that, because that's what we are here for. We are getting exposed to <clears throat> a lot of food, a lot of, in fact, ways of life, if you want to call it that, into our, into our <clears throat> daily life. And uh, consequently, a person's diet and way of life has a very, very far-reaching effect on his or her health. The dramatic in increase in the incidence of lifestyle diseases, particularly covered in the category of metabolic syndrome, which includes diabetes, obesity, coronary heart disease, hypertension, strokes and dyslipidemia, has resulted in a very great economic and serious health consequences on the population, more specifically that particular group which is in urban India. And uh, <coughs> the impact of these lifestyle diseases has again increased over a period of the last few years, dramatically beyond the industrialized world, and it is now something which has to be tackled in Asia, which includes China, India, and Japan. Realizing the tremendous impact of these diseases on the targeted human population, we had a meeting in Moscow in April 2011. I had the occasion to attend that meeting, where for the first time the WHO had proposed a meeting primarily to talk about <coughs> how we need to tackle <coughs> lifestyle diseases and other non-communicable diseases.
It is estimated that over 750 million people in the world are overweight, out of which 300 million are obese, and accounts for 325,000 deaths each year. India is also <clears throat> very, very naturally affected by this kind of a <clears throat> situation. From an Indian perspective, a recent report in Pune indicates that the lifestyle diseases are spreading rapidly in the last decade. Recorded cases of hypertension-related deaths rose from <coughs> 2 to 1149 in 2011, and diabetes-related critical illnesses rose from 1 to 1343 <coughs> by 2011. In these figures, again, I don't uh, place too much of credence on these figures, in the sense that it must be much, much, much more widespread than these figures indicate. <coughs> The most worrisome factor in our country in this lifestyle disease story is the emergence of old age uh, health problems in the younger population. The incidence of <coughs> obesity, diabetes and heart diseases such as stroke is steadily increasing in the high productivity in the family life stages of the urban Indian. We have the dubious distinction of being called uh, as a crowned capital for diabetes in the world. So, I mean, this is one of those areas where we need to <coughs> reassess how we are going to handle ourselves, how we are going to handle this particular aspect of our <coughs> daily life more successfully to ensure that lifestyle diseases are taken care of and more specifically how we are able to tackle it in the country. Now, <clears throat> when we have to tackle something in India, it is a, it is, it is a huge uh, kind of a challenge. <clears throat> Over the last 20-30 years, in the <clears throat> health area, we have been concentrating on subjects like maternal and child health as a national uh, effort, as a national challenge, bringing down the infant mortality, bringing down the maternal mortality rates in the country. And uh, we've been setting up a network of healthcare units in the rural areas. India is, as uh, all of you must be knowing, but for the benefit of of friends who have come from outside. We are a federal setup. We have 28 states and uh, seven s smaller units called the Union Territories. And uh, most of these states, and health being a state subject in our constitution, it is the states who are responsible for implementing our health programs. <coughs> The first 60 years after independence, the states have been implementing many of these programs and uh, the success of implementation of these programs is very naturally different in different states. You have Kerala where our human development indicators are, can measure up to <clears throat> any place in the world, then you have some larger states, more populated states like Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, where <clears throat> the impact has not been so uh, dramatic. I am mentioning this in the context of our need to understand how big a challenge it would be to implement a program in the entire country. <clears throat> So the sooner we realize it, the sooner we understand how we need to do it, the better it would be. So it is in the fitness of things that in this kind of a situation, we have symposia like this, we have people who are knowledgeable and who would uh, 
introduce how well to alter the NCD epidemic as it is about to set up, as it, is, as it is sort of taking off in the country successfully in the future. So it is in this light that I would be viewing the program. I would not need to talk about probiotic, probiotics and the science part of it. All of you are probably, prob I mean, most certainly, we call it probably, much better to qualify to talk about it. I would therefore restrict myself to help understand and how we are able to translate what is science and what is a scientific <coughs> solution for the problem at a national level. How do we take a, an issue which is <coughs> understood and probably probed at great depth at a lab level to a <coughs> national level? level and probably come out with solutions which are implementable. Our greatest challenge in most of our disease control programs in the country has been the implementability of many of our programs. The technical part, the understanding of the disease, I mean they're all fine. But you know the challenge, we face a challenge when we want to <clears throat> make a micro situation, a micro understanding of a, an issue into a macro level solution for the <clears throat> entire country. And this is where I would, uh, I mean, uh, request or probably seek your assistance, guidance and your thoughts <clears throat> through the symposia as to how best we can implement a lot of what you're going to discuss today and tomorrow in the field. <clears throat> Coming to the Food Safety and Standards Authority, which I am presently working in, the authority is very nascent. We have, through an act of parliament, created this authority about three years back. The act itself has come into force only last year. We are about a year and a quarter into the implementation of the act in the entire country. We used to have, before the FSS Act, a lot of individual acts which were being implemented in silos. So this was thought to be a an attempt at <clears throat> drawing up an overarching act where you pick up the various acts which are already under implementation under one roof and uh, implement it. So the FSSAI, the first S stands for S stands for safety in food, and the second S stands for developing standards in foodstuffs in the country. Now we have been lagging behind in uh, setting standards over a period of time. Our food safety standards, I mean over the last 60 years we only have about 330 or 350 standards which have been sort of arrived at <coughs> in our old system of the Prevention of Food Adulteration Act, under the Act. Now this is a challenge which I think we need to take on, we, we need to take head on. <clears throat> we have, I recognize a lot of scientists here who have been assisting us very, very, <clears throat> with great commitment and uh, with great alacrity. <clears throat> and uh, a subject like probiotics and how best we need to introduce this into our system would also have to be made a part of our <clears throat> food safety authority procedures, our food safety authority act, <clears throat> and uh, before we are able to implement it. I recall in this connection 
that we've had some earlier discussions with uh, some of the <clears throat> persons who are in this area who are doing a lot of work in this field. And uh, I would request this symposia and subsequent occasions where all of you meet <clears throat> to sort of draw up some kind of a formulation, some kind of a define the four corners of how we need to implement it in this, this in our country because I don't think anyone needs convincing that we need to do it. <clears throat> so once we have got that out of the way, <clears throat> now our next challenge is how we are going to get it incorporated into our system, how do we are going to get it incorporated in our various acts and procedures so that we are able to give the best possible uh, I think you would be better place to put it best possible treatment, best possible advice, best possible guidance to people in the country because it's a, a lifestyle <coughs> disease which we need to tackle which a lifestyle disease as a a non-expert myself, I would uh, um, understand is something which you have to do it all along. It is a continuous process. It's not as though you drop a medicine today and then you don't have to do something <coughs> for four months or six months or something. This is something which has to be internalized, which has to be made a part of your lifestyle, <coughs> part of your life. And uh, this is where I think we, the challenge arises and I'm sure that uh, while discussing the more, uh, how do I put important, grave, scientific part of the discussion in the, uh, which you're going to have in the symposia and today and tomorrow, I would also request you to probably sort of uh, set aside some time where you you can sort of think about it and uh, as most of you would know <clears throat> how best to implement it in our country. I would uh, on my part <clears throat> once I get suggestions or <clears throat> advice from a fora like this would take it up with the health ministry too because the health ministry, as I mentioned in my initial remarks, is in the 12th five-year plan <coughs> going to give a huge boost to um, NCD and tackling NCD and lifestyle um, diseases in our country. So I'm, <coughs> I will uh, close uh, my address today with the, <clears throat> with the hope that <clears throat> the symposia will be very successful and uh, it will throw up issues which <clears throat> we can pick up, we can sort of take up in our implementation of uh, the entire program as such and more particularly from a food uh, Safety and Standards Authority. I would also like to <clears throat> get uh, some suggestions and words of advice as to how best to lay down standards, evolve standards, so that only the genuine makers and the producers of probiotics are uh, allowed to sort of commercially exploit the advantages of probiotics as a system and uh, I'm, I'm sure all of you understand that standard setting is one way of ensuring that the best is provided to the <coughs> consumers. Finally, I once again thank the organizers, organizers of this symposia for having invited me and also I take this opportunity to once again thank you for coming here and I wish the symposia 
all the best in the coming two days. Thank you very much.